Okay, so now we've got all this script logic. What are we going to do with it? Let's do a quick review. Here at the top of my script, I've declared the script level variables. And if you recall, I explained uh, the concept of scope, script scope. For instance, my p variable being called by my script p here. And inside a function, you can refer to any of these variables. Uh, here's my functions. And I showed you the role function, the play again function, the player turn function, and the computer turn function. Uh, and the display score function. So that was pretty much it. Now all these functions are waiting. They're ready. Uh, let's put them to use. Let's write a script that that does something with these functions, that calls these functions. Okay, so let me just go down here to the bottom of the script and I'm going to add this script body. So this is going to be the portion of the script that actually runs when you run the script. So when I execute the script, everything prior to this, all my functions and my, and my variables get loaded up into memory and they wait. And then this body executes and it calls them. And really, uh, this portion right here, you know, I'm going to just, let me, let me just clear that out for right now so you can see something. Uh, this really is the script body right here. There's all the code. The functions do everything. So uh, it basically says this, while my Q variable is not equal to Q, and if you recall, that's quit. So while, it, while the, the user has not asked to quit, then just loop and do the player turn, then a computer turn, and it will just comp keep looping. And as long as the player hasn't quit, it will keep playing. And if the player does quit, well, that will cause this loop to end. And then it will say player has quit game and the application will exit. Now let me put the rest of my script body back in here so you can see all of this other stuff. All it does is just write out the rules and that's it. It just waits for you. It prints out the rules and waits for you to press a key. So the, the, really the, the logic of this script is all right there. And you can see it's a very, very simple logic because we have included all of the complex logic inside of the functions. So let's just save this script and go ahead and, and run it. And actually, I'm going to make one modification to this script before I run it. Right now, I've got uh, a number of uh, points required for a win set to 100, which is the classic game of pig. But I'm going to actually save mine with 35. Let's, let's have a quick game here. Um, and I think you'll be able to get the point through a quick game. All right, so I run my script, pig, and here we go. There you see my instructions, and press the space bar, let's go. Press a key. Player rolls three. You can see my functions are firing. It's telling me the tally for my current turn is three. If I were to hold now, my overall score would be three, and there's my score. Do I want to roll again? Well, of course I do. I rolled a four, so my tally is seven. If I held, it would be seven. Let's go ahead and hold, so let's not roll again. I'll say N. All right, my tally is 7, my score is 7. The computer rolls, and the computer, as you remember, rolls 5 times, and had a pretty good roll there. Uh, did not hit a 1, so kept on rolling and got 21. Um, let me press a key. I got a 6, so my total, if I were to hold, my score would go to 13. Let's roll again. I got a 4. Um, keep rolling. Got another 4, so I could hold here and get a 21. All right, uh, I've got a 27. I'm not getting very big rolls. There we go. I'd be a 31. I might win here. Oh, I've got a 34. I need one more point. So let's go ahead here and roll. Oh, and I rolled a 1. And I lost every bit of my score. I'm now back to 7. And the computer wins. I am going to show you now the next function. We haven't seen this one. Here's my play again function. Now let me just go back to my diagram 
and you can see that I've now made it down <coughs> what I would consider the unhappy path because I rolled, I rolled a one, the computer rolled five times, and in the tallying of the computer's turn determined the computer won, and I'm now down to this choice where I can play again or I can quit. So I think I will just quit. So script logic is really uh, all about functions, as you've seen. And the, the actual code that calls the functions can be very, very simple and easy to read and easy to understand. And all of the critical stuff should be kept in functions. Now, I could have done a lot of different things here. And you can take this code and you can customize it. I mean, maybe I'd want to add the ability to place bets. Or maybe I need more careful and thoughtful AI, even though in this case the uh, artificial intelligence was able to beat me. I might, you know, I might want to have it do something differently than just roll five times every single time it takes its turn. You could design this uh, application, this script, to allow more players if you wanted. You could play against someone else, not just against the computer. You could add your own rules. Maybe add some kind of rule where if I roll several ones in a row, maybe I would get rewarded so I wouldn't have to keep suffering uh, the way that I suffered in the game that I played. So to summarize this, um, diagram out your logic. Script logic can get pretty complicated, and you know you might miss a detail, and that's when you get your logic error. So plan it out, make an activity diagram, maybe flow charts, specific charts to explain your logic and your your concept. And then when you do make your script, um, remember use functions. Keep the important code in functions, and then use very simple logic, like I did here to actually run those functions.